The Superbike Show on Motorsport Radio. Michael Howarth is a, a co-commentator alongside Fred Clark. He will be heard on the BSB Radio. Um, for those of you tuning in that aren't at the set or who don't listen to your sport, it's on the BSB website or it's um, it's actually Trackside. He's the Trackside commentator. He used to be a British Superbike rider and he's hoping to come back and we'll try and find out more with him tonight. And uh, I believe he does join us right now on the line. Hello, good evening, Michael. Hello. Hello, fantastic to have you on the show. Uh, you are live on Motorsport Radio. Welcome. Um, how are you, first of all? I'm all right, thank you very much. I noticed you put me on after nine o'clock, though, with uh, <laughs> that, my that, Bath that... Radio interviews. I always have to go after the watershed, apparently. <laughs> there has been a couple of comments I was reading uh, <laughs> along similar lines. But, uh, but yeah, thank you for coming on anyway. And, uh, and once again, uh, Kiko has, uh, has a, a bag full of questions for you, Michael. Magic. Cool. Hello again. Um, thanks for joining us. I'm sure this will be a colourful interview for sure. Uh, sum up British Superbikes in 2017. You followed it all the way through, really. What, what a year. Well, yeah. Um, pure excitement, I guess. Um, it was topsy turvy and, and went all the way down all, all year, didn't it? You know, with um, obviously a lot of people don't like the short end system, but you can't say that it doesn't work and it doesn't it doesn't make things much more exciting towards the end of the year so yeah just a, another fantastic year really um yeah um yeah it's um with, with new riders coming through and making it just more exciting so we've not just got shaky burn and leon winning every weekend it's it's, it's proven itself to be the best domestic championship in the world again Absolutely, we had ten winners in the in the season for the first time since 1998. What's that most? What's that mainly down to? Is it down to Stuart Higgs and race organisation, or is it just luck that we got riders coming in? Yeah, uh, well, yeah, it would have been eleven if I were there, obviously. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> the injury still prevails. Uh, no, um, <laughs> yeah, you, you, you give it the nail on the head yourself, Kiko. There, it, it's the simple fact that since the the rule change come in in. Was it 2011? I think it was. It became across the board or whatever. That it's just it's built up and it's built up that everyone can get the same box. This everyone's on the same electronics. You know, there's no there's no real factory team in in BSB anymore. You know, Paul Bird is close to a factory team as you can get, I guess. But yeah, everyone's on a on a much more level playing field. Um, you're not having to spend all the money on on the fancy parts because they, they're not allowed within the rules. And it, it's now showing that teams that once of a day stood no chance now stand every chance. Absolutely, yeah. And what back to this year? We kind of went off there a little bit, but back to this year. What's been your highlights and who's disappointed you this season? <laughs> oh, good grief! Um, Disappointments. <laughs> Wrong word, <laughs> especially with my, quite a few of the rides and stuff being my friends. I think, um, <laughs> well, the, 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 the highlight, I've got to say, for, for me personally, um, was Jake Dixon um, coming uh, coming to the front and, and winning both races at Knock Hill. I think that was a, a big turning point for the championship. But that definitely showed that, that anybody could, could come in and kind of win in BSB. You know, it was his first real year in Superbike after injuring himself the year before. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I think that set a good precedent for everybody because it gave everybody a self belief that a, a, a very small team with a very small budget could could win races. And then he made the show. Then, um, yeah, the the biggest disappointment of the bloody elf fire. Um, I'd have to say, I have to say, Michael Lavater. I expected so much from the kid um, on the Yamaha. Now it turns out. Okay, we took trying to, to be a bit PC. Uh, it, it wasn't all Michael's fault all year, basically. Um, I don't want to slate. I don't want to slate the team because they were a great team, and I don't want to slate Michael because he's a great rider. But the package together didn't work, and there were reasons behind the scenes that the public didn't know about. And that were a lot deeper than everybody thought. It wasn't just a, an issue of chatter and such. So, so yeah. The, as a package, Michael and the, and, 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 and the McCam Yamaha on his side of the garage were the biggest disappointment. And I think that Ellison was just bloody unlucky. Yeah, that's a fair point. Yeah, lots of bad luck across all, all the way to the year. If I was to pick one, I think it'd be... Big, biggest disappointment would probably be Tyco BMW on the whole. Not no, no one cares. What, no one cares what you think. You're interviewing me. We're not bothered about I, your I, I'm only, Listen, Michael, don't you start getting, <laughs> don't you start getting brave. I'll just throw you off here in a moment. I tell you what, I'll set Morris on you. I bet he's tuned in right now. 
mean, anyway, what would that have been before in Moto, when you were on about MotoGP and you were bagging out know, good riders and your man there that's, that's on radio, well, you couldn't pick the same bloody rider? Come Luke, on. Luke Hatton said Michael definitely won't be swearing if he's got a pie in front of him. Moving on then. <laughs> <laughs> most, most memorable moment of the season or most magical moment of the season? <laughs> oh, well, the most... The most memorable, but it's certainly obviously not the most magical, was Leon's crash um, at Brands yeah. Hatch, which, which decided the championship. Um, the most magical. The most magical. That's a fair, that's a fair question, that. Um, because, uh, because, there so, because there were so many. I mean, even something as simple as, like, Lee Jackson at, uh, at Cadwell, getting himself on the podium. I thought that was magical, you know. Not not did that when out and out on a... Um, a won the season and unfortunately I think he's lost his ride at the end of it but yeah. but again it just showed that the, the young talent's coming through and it can it, the old guard are slowly losing the grip on it it's a, a little bit you know it's not I think 2018 is going to be a ridiculous championship I think you're going to see so many different riders winning next year I think that you, you know you'll probably beat 10 riders next year well well we'll hold you to that then What's what's been the best race though? If you could go back and watch one race from 2017, which one would it be? The best race. Um, do you know what? I haven't got a best a best race. Like I say, I think um, I think Nixon up at Knock Hill. I think that yep. was. I think they were phenomenal. But I think yeah, certainly not the best race. I think the best weekend was the last weekend. Was was Brad yep. Latch, the, the the showdown finale, the three, the three races, all across it because of what it meant. And uh, you know, Leon, Leon after the first race, he finished fourth. You were thinking, ah, oh, he's got this in the bag, he's got this in the bag, and then he, everything went tits up in in race two, and obviously he, he binned it on race three. But for, for sheer excitement, and you know, the crowd, the crowd certainly got value from. And there were fifty eight thousand people there, which is the biggest crowd we've had in God knows how many years. You know, it's. I know there's been on twenty thousand folk there watching watching Fogarty, but you know the, the crowds across the board across the country are getting are getting bigger for BSB because it's just getting so good and the, and the racing is so good. It, yeah, it really is. It really is. Well, who's been the best BSB team of the year? Who would you say is that honour goes to? The team of the year. The team of the year. I can't do that. Well, I suppose. Hmm. I don't really know. Again, you. You say the people. That, well, in fact, no. I tell you, I, for me, for me, it, it'd be Peter Exton's team, Jane um, okay. Gee's team, because they've been they've been knocking on the door for for, for quite for a couple of years, and I I genuinely thought, and it, it's, it's not again, it's not taking anything away from Pete and his, and all these boys and Dean and, and and the group. I just thought that when they took when they got Liam at the start of this year, I thought it was it would I thought it was going to be hard for them because they were. They've been in the limelight, but they've just been underneath. You, do you know what I mean? On the top, if there were four teams at the top, they'd been a fourth, and then all of a sudden they were fired up to the top, and it was like you're now expected to win. You've no bloody choice at this. You've been given yeah, yeah. Kevin is back in. You've been given. Um, you've been given Leon Aslan. You know he's, he's signed for you. So yeah, I would say that they acquitted themselves real well. And then a very close second would have to be the Anvil Tag higher lot, um, uh. but. Because it was, it, you know, Sidney Josh was a massive coup, but Josh couldn't have done what he did without those guys. And yeah, they've had minor success in, in other championships in, in super sport. I think they've run with one race with Richard Cooper, etc. Uh, but to come from a team that scored three points the, years before, the year before, we were smaller, and have always been a back marker team, then we go, boom! We can give Josh Brooks what he wants, he's got what he wants, and he starts winning races. Yeah, they, they, that, was, that, was, that was pretty bloody good, I know. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd probably be agreeing in both of them situations. No, right, like, we'll have a topic of conversation now. We've thrashed uh, 2017 to shreds. What's your thoughts on Moto2 in British super sport? What's my thoughts on that? Well, I think to went to Graham with everybody for this because I'm a big advocate for it. I think um, yeah. all this collapse up all year about Alistair Seeley coming in and spoiling races and all this nonsense. We're just... He was just he was, he was giving mad asses something to whinge about, basically. Do you know what I mean? Oh, there's nothing to mourn about. So what we'll do, we'll call Tony Scott, we'll call Alistair and you know, what the bloody hell's BSB doing letting letting this happen? Well, 
the bike needed testing in a racing environment and in race situations to see to see what it were like as a package, how much it had cost to run for the weekend so that Tony Scott and BSB could go away and do their sums and come back and say, right, we can do this in years to come when Supersport dies out for around the same sort of money as what a Supersport bike costs to run. Um, I've heard a few of the, the ideas for the rules and such, and, it, and they all sound very good to me. I mean, nobody's nobody wins once when the speed-up chassis has been in there this year because it wasn't battling at the front. So uh -huh. everyone's having a go at Tony Scott and Alistair to feel it for doing such a bloody good job. Well, how does that work? Do you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? It didn't, interfere, it didn't interfere with a single race this year, Alistair. It didn't affect the championship in any way. I think the one person that fell off battling with Alistair, I think, was that, was that Joe Francis? Am I right? Yeah, at uh, Foxton. Yeah. Yeah, but Joe would have gone for that move if it had been anybody else and all. So, that, again, that wasn't it because it was Tony Scott's bike and the triumph thing there. No, so um, I think it's needed. I think next year when there's quite a few more uh, bikes in doing it, I think it will be a good little sub-championship sub alongside Super Sport. And unfortunately, it, it, the, the process has got to start now because Super Sport's going. It, the bikes are going. I don't know the real reasons behind why the um, manufacturers are stopping with 600s now, whether it's dental emissions or this, that, and the other. I know they cost as much to develop as a 1,000cc as a as a, as a bike does. And then on the road for road for road bikes, 1,000cc bikes have got that many rider aids and they're that small that people have... I think they're just skipping over it and thinking, why the bloody hell do I need to bother going and getting a little 600 when I can ride this 1,000cc bike quite easily, you know? You know, even our fixed... Even the Yamaha, that they, they released the new R6 this year. They put a new fairing on an old bike. Do you know what I mean? They, were no, yeah. they didn't do anything. It takes top and never so slightly. They made it so it passed some emissions. But So, yeah, no, I'm, <coughs> I'm all for it. I'm all for it. And, I, and I, I can't wait to see nine or ten of the bikes out there next year. Okay, that's a fair point. Back on, we had a conversation with Steve Parrish about World Superbikes. What's British Superbikes doing right that World Superbikes <laughs> is doing wrong? What, 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 why aren't the two bikes <laughs> well, Every, British Superbikes is doing everything right that World Superbikes is doing wrong. I think it's as simple as that, isn't it? Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know where the, I don't know what World Superbikes game is. I, I don't get it. I don't understand the politics behind it. All this, you know, BMW are saying that they use the electronics they use in World Superbikes are so essentially what you get on the road bikes because they're that inca, they can just dial in and they can mess with them. So that's their system sorted. Um, Kawasaki electronic. There's, there was supposed to be a 10k uh, price cap on the electronic systems. It's just it, it, there's so many loopholes and ways around things in World Super. I think that that's half the problem. The left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. Um, and when the rules were written for BSB as it is now, they were written by Scott Smart and and, and obviously a few other people. But Scott's the technical director. In World Superbike, so if Scott was given a free hand to say, right, this is what we're going to do, and that's it, I dare say that the that World Superbikes would be a, a force to be reckoned with again. You know, as, as far as the racing goes, but it's just not that way. And the few rules, the few rule changes they made for next year, and now they're in there, and I don't, I don't really see what they're doing. To be quite honest, you know, yeah. it's, they're very vague. It's, I, I, I yeah. find they're very hard to actually interpret. What are they actually trying to get at? Yeah. No, yeah. no, it's just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But another talking point away from all kinds of superbike racing now is the British Grand Prix venue. Where do you think it will go? Why do you think it will go there? But where do you want it to go is the bigger question, I think. Donington wow. or Silverstone? Well, I want it to be at Donington because I've already booked my bloody hotel for next year right near Circuit. Um, <laughs> so it's nice to go to Silverstone. I've got a right. I'm going to do a drive every bloody morning to get them there because hopefully I'll be commentating again with Fred. Um, yep. <laughs> it's all I'll have me back. I'll be, uh, the chief executive, the, the head poncho at Silverstone, apparently really like what I was doing. But uh, okay. yeah, it depends. If it, it depends if he starts going to his Alcoholics Anonymous meetings or not, so whether I get back next year. Because um, once he's sober, I think I'm a clown. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> riders would want most of them would want Silverstone because it's and it's a great track to ride, and it is a Grand Prix circuit. Um, the fans all want Donington because you can see a lot more. Um, <clears throat> the right people have certainly got Donington now. Um, yeah, you know, like it, like it or not, you know, this is not sucking up to to BSB and Iggs in Palm and, and kissing their houses in any way. But the fact is, the circuits that they took on so far, 
they've turned them around. Whether people like it or not, venues now are a good place to go. You know, there's, there's someone cleaning the toilets all the time. There's, there's plenty of food stores. You can do so much. In BSB, 10 years ago, you know, you're walking into a toilet and it was, you might as well just gone on the floor. You know, they've, they've cleaned it up and they've made it a, a good family experience <coughs> for everybody. So... If they can, if they can put the investment into Donington, because it does need quite a lot of upgrading. Um, yeah. If they got it for, if they got the Grand Prix for next year, I would imagine that will only be three quarters of what you would come to expect. So if they got a five-year deal, so you know next year would be it'd be a bit, a bit of a struggle because we just don't have a time frame to get everything perfect. But after that, yeah, the. Those guys running Donington and running MotoGP would be would be fantastic for sure, definitely, definitely. But you know, like I say, the Silverstone's just it's just so big. There were sixty odd thousand folk there, and it had about three folk there this year. So you put sixty thousand people in Don, Donington's little natural amphitheatre, and it'll look packed, and it'll look an amazing spectacle. You know, but Billy Parlin only got thirty odd thousand people there this week, and I don't know what that's if that's a good crowd for there, but. It still yeah. looks fast. It's a fair, fair track, you know. So yeah, no, for me, Donington, please. Okay. okay, that's good. That's good enough for me. What's your plans on racing for 2018? I hear you're making a, a bit of a comeback at the grand old um, age of 51. Um, I, to be honest, mate, I mean, I'm busy with with one or two things. Um, uh, and I went. I was in hospital again yesterday um, with this bloody hit, but. I bugged last year um, and I was expecting to be given the all clear and so I could go and crack on and unfortunately it's just not worked out like that I have to go back in four weeks now they've, um, they're have they not happy with something in my pelvis they're not happy with something in my hip um, my back's not so cracking but but like you say I'm an old man so I'm not really bothered about any of those um, I just want to be fit enough to be able to start testing if something happens around February time and the longer this the, the injury carries on and they can't get anything to fit you know they can't fix it in time then it, it, it takes away from me being able to lose about 15 stone and get fit and actually ride a bike and, and see if I can get up to speed but yeah I've just, there's a couple of irons in the fire that, that are looking good um, and we'll be doing something we'll be doing, we'll be doing something I mean you know this year I've not I've not rode at all um, I'm just going to do my little plug thing here but we're still with a little side company that I have um, supplying bike parts and bits and bobs, we sponsored 14 riders this year. I think it is with leathers from from one okay. X from the leather company that me and my my business partner uh, run in this country. Um, what well, a couple of kids have won world championships that wearing them in the three of the Kawasaki Cup and Luke Edger had them on this year. You know they, that. But so I, I've always had involvement and I, and I always will. But I'm yeah, I am open to be back next year on a superbike in superbikes. But we will see. We will see. Okay, okay, right. We got a question here from Tony Morris. Um, oh, <laughs> can't, say can't say this is unexpected. He says uh, pie chips and gravy or pie mash and liquor. Well, he is a liquor, and he knows <laughs> yeah. my that already. That it is obviously <laughs> chips and gravy because why the ruddy hell? Would any, firstly, why would you get a potato where you can make chips out of and roast potatoes and gratins and all sorts of beautiful things? Why would you boil it to death and turn it to mash, for one? So that's out the window. Liquor, didn't that used to be something that they were made out of eels that come out of the Thames? Yeah, and wanged a bit of parsley on it, made it all right, and then put and covered that over a beautiful pie. No, 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 no. <laughs> the Southern folk are a bit funny, they're a bit weird, but we tolerate them because they keep the French away from us up north. So they're all right. But no, it's chips and pie chips and gravy for me. You're talking rubbish. Anyway, <laughs> well, um, the second question is again from Tony. What does he think? What do you think about James Ellison going to tag racing? What do I think about James Ellison going to tag racing? Um, I'd like to be able to just sit on the fence here and say nothing, but I, but that's not my way, and, and I can't. James is a He's a very good, very good friend of mine. Um, I have a lot of respect for him. He's ridiculous. He's a very, very fast rider on his day, as proven, you know, many times. He's, he's a proven race winner, etc. He's done more GP, he's done this, he's done that. Um, I just hope that he, if he equips himself in, in, in the right way and doesn't... Because, it, you know, even though, you know, he's, he's left basically what was the factory team even though they, they got a little bit of factory system. They've, they've left the big team to go to move sideways to a slightly smaller team. 
And I hope that doesn't have any effect on his mindset that, you know, it, the bike's not just right. It's not like this one that was last year. If he goes in with a, with a clean slate like, like Josh did and, and works, works to get the bike here he wants, then yeah, he'll do all right. But you, sometimes it just, it, it, it could be, it could be it could be hard for him, and I and I hope he proves me wrong. And it, and that's not taking anything away from James or tag racing at all, in in any way. I just I don't want him to keep making stimulate. I don't want him to keep saying, "Oh, well, last year my bike was this, and last year my bike was that." He needs to go in as if he's he's on a completely different machine. You know? Do you know what I mean? Does, does that make any sense whatsoever? Yeah, I, I see where you're going with that. Uh, another question from Dixie Clark, Dixie Dave Clark here says. How can you get motor breakers back in the paddock? How can you get motor breakers back in the paddock? Um, well, I've been trying since he left, to be honest. I speak to Sean on a, on a daily basis, and, and I'd love to see him back. He's one of the best, the big characters that we have in the paddock. He, he runs a good setup. He's a genuine bloke. He's a spade's a spade, and if you don't like him, he's not bothered. Um, I think yeah. he just needs. I think he's, he's one of them. He's been around forever, and, and maybe he just needed a break. And we'll see if he comes back next year. And, and I hope he does. But one thing is for sure, he won't be. He won't stay away for too long. Um, you know, maybe maybe bribery. Um, you know, he don't mind looking at. He don't mind looking at a young lass in bikini top. So maybe we we'll get a few more of them down. He'll come running back. <laughs> we shall see. Yeah. My, Michael Howarth said that, not me. Uh, another question here. <laughs> Simon Hall says, "Does do you think that Thruxton should be dropped due to the incidents that happened there this year and the tyre wear issues from this year?" Um, absolutely not. It's down to the tyre manufacturer to make a tyre to to last a race and sort it out. And I, I did see a lot of the super stock riders were struggling like mad. Um, and <coughs> yeah, it was. <coughs> You know, obviously there was, um, there was um, the unfortunate incident there, and and there was quite a few others. Yeah. But the one, the one where the, the lad unfortunately lost his life coming onto the start, finished straight. That could have happened anywhere. So you can't say that was down to a circuit. It wasn't because Thruxton was so fast, because it was on the slowest part of Thruxton coming onto the start, finished straight. So yeah. Um, yeah, they are they, they are in the middle of making vast improvements, and believe me, the the BSB safety guys, the commission that they have they go around and check the tracks week in and week out and do all that. If it wasn't, if they didn't deem it safe enough to race there, we wouldn't be there. Um, from a rider's perspective, you'd, you'd have an absolute backlash. You'd have, you'd have folks going on strike if you got the hooks and because it is one of the best circuits that we race at. Because just yep. for the sheer speed, it's completely different to anything else we have anywhere. Um, Snetterton used to be Similar until they change it to that 300 setup, which is just a bloody go kart track. I can't stand it. Um, but yeah, the sheer exhilaration and, and the speeds that we get at and uh, I don't think you'd find many riders that dislike it and would or would say that they don't want to go there anymore. Okay, okay. And finally, I'm going to put you on the spot because you are a commentator. If you could pick two commentators in MotoGP, who would they be? And if you could pick two commentators for World Superbikes, who would they be as well? Two commentators in MotoGP? Yeah. Uh, what, you mean, to actually on the telly job? On the telly? Yeah, yeah, broadcast, yeah. Oh, uh, well, um, well, me, um, and okay. probably Neil Hodgson, because he's from up road in Burnley, so we could turn it into a proper northern show. No, but um, we don't want that. We want sensible people, so <laughs> who do you have on? Well, tough. You ask me, and that's my opinion. So me and Neil Hodgson okay. for that. Uh, but that had never happened, because the, what BT Sport have done with MotoGP, I know... It costs a fortune to watch it and all that clap trap. But the show they put on every weekend is, is fantastic. And I've watched the guys working at Silverstone. They work themselves to death yeah, to yeah. Put, you know, bring the show to TV. So, but yeah, that, you know, it's a shame it's not free. I agree with Steve Parrish on that one. I think that the, when, even BSB, when BSB was free to air many years ago, it was so much easier to get sponsors. Yes, you didn't get all the the championships in because yep. they kind of focused on just the, su the super bike races but like it or not when it was on terrestrial TV the viewing figures were a bit more and it just seemed to it just seemed to be easier to att to attract sponsorship from a you know for a kid that was going to a thing said oh we're on BBC 2 or, or ITV or, or whatever it, it did seem <coughs> a bit easier so that's a shame uh, world super bikes <sighs> could be anyone really little and large Bill and Ben it doesn't really matter to me because I until they find the format that works, I don't the uh, nobody can make it interesting because it's just plain and simply not. You know, the 
I feel for Steve. I feel for Steve Parrish. I feel for for Whitham. I feel for all the guys that, that are having to commentate on that because it it must be hard work. Genuinely, it must be hard work because there's and and I don't know whether there's, there's something in the way that it's it's filmed and and the production of it that just doesn't seem to it doesn't ignite. You don't need people watching around the outside of the track to make it interesting on TV, and it just. There's just something missing, and I, and I do. I hope they find it because it, you know, the MotoGP is doing so well. We need World Superbikes to do well because it, it all filters down and makes, you know, it just brings more people into the sport and makes it watch it, and then it makes it more viable. You get more sponsors, it makes for a better do. Yeah, yeah. One other reason that they that you wouldn't be able to go onto MotoGP with Neil Hodgson is because BT Sport um, wouldn't invest in subtitles for normal English people to actually understand both of you. But on, uh, 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 I think you'll find that when I have done TV work in the past, um, which I do put on my CV, uh, my TV okay. presenter, extraordinaire, uh, I, people can understand me quite well, if you don't mind. Oh, well, I do apologise to all the people it's in Richard, Richard, there that, never mind that. that can got, understand got, the local dialect. We've got that Colin Edwards on, he's from Texas, he's not even from England. And everyone understands him, so they'd understand me just fine. I'd yeah, be fine. I'd be good at that. I'd be good. I'd be good at that. Michael, Michael, he talks English. That there's a reason for that. You talk foreign. <laughs> he speaks American <laughs> English. We're not. We're, we're not going to get into the racist zone of Northern. He, says, you know, he can't been... even say aluminium. He says aluminium or whatever they say over there. He can't. Even I believe, speak English I believe it's raining, Michael. So you better go and clear out the gutter on the inside of your house because that's how much it rains up north. We're going <laughs> to let it off. And we will catch you in the near future. I'm sure we'll be in touch. And thanks for coming on the show tonight. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks for having me, dude. Cheers, mate. See you later. Bye bye. Motorsport Radio, the Superbike Show on Motorsport Radio.